Retiring successfully takes decades of careful planning, great decision making. I've got three controversial retirement myths that you need to avoid along the way. I got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. I am one of approximately 20 CFPs at Corhorn Financial Group. We've got a full team, nearly 100 people working in either our wealth management financial planning uh, department or our CPA firm, tax prep firm, insurance agency, health insurance, that sort of stuff. Retirement plans department, helping small businesses set up 401ks and serve the employees at those businesses. And But with the, with the amount of CFPs on our team, we have helped thousands of people retire successfully once, right? That's, that's for many people, that is the aim. That is how you define retirement success. Yeah, I, I wanna leave work once and not need to return. Other people envision part-time work in retirement. But along the way, it requires discipline and wise planning, good strategy uh, it, to us. It, you, I just don't see how you can achieve a successful retirement without looking at all six areas of your financial life and how they intersect so that you can make wise decisions, great decisions. That's why we preach here at the Wise Money Show. You need to take a comprehensive approach to your financial life and you need to work with the CFP. On that path towards achieving that successful retirement, there's a lot of other voices that can get in the way and potentially lead you off track. A family member, a coworker even, or even another financial professional that you might think is a, a financial planner, but, but really they just help with investments or something else. Those folks could make a comment or two or, or speak into your retirement journey and could lead you off track. Well, what are three potential retirement myths that you might hear from someone else that could take you off track. First is that there is a magic number. Now they're not gonna say that, but there is a certain number that once you save up this amount, now you're able to retire. That's not true, guys. That's, that's not true. There, the truth is there are five factors that are interrelated that, that all connect to help you determine, are you on track for retirement? Those five factors I mentioned are interrelated. So one of them is how much you have saved up for investing, for, for, for retirement, excuse me. But, but that's not the only one. And if that one is interdependent on others, that can't be the only factor. A quick illustration makes this perfectly clear. Imagine retirement is a vacation. Do all vacations cost the same amount of money? No, they don't. It depends on where are you going, i.e. how much are you going to be spending? And it certainly depends on how long are you staying. A long weekend vacation is very different than a two week Alaskan cruise that a friend of mine just went on, right? So it varies significantly. And therefore, of course, you, you can't just say, well, once you save up five grand, you can go on vacation. No, it depends on what vacation and, and how long, right? There are more factors involved. Same thing with retirement. Sorry, very overly simplistic example there, but when you wanna retire, so your age, but also embedded in there is what's your life expectancy. So how long is retirement gonna last? That's the first factor, the first assumption you're gonna make. Second, how much are you spending? What's your lifestyle in retirement? And a lot of sub factors here, what's the inflation rate? What, it, what, what are you gonna do with, with Medicare? So what are your health insurance decisions? What's your tax strategy look like? So how much will you pay in taxes? Those are all expenses, so that's the second variable. Third, what are your income sources? A sub bullet here, subcategory. How are you gonna optimize Social Security? Are you gonna draw it right away? Are you gonna delay? And then do you have other sources of retirement income? Part-time work, like I mentioned, most people don't want to include that in their base assumption, but do you have rental income or do you have a pension, that sort of thing? The fourth area is how much do you have saved up for retirement? And a sub bullet there, how much are you saving on an ongoing basis? So how much are you contributing? What's your company match, that sort of thing. And then the fifth factor is how much risk are you comfortable taking with those investments? Do you want high risk? Do you want medium risk? Do you want super low risk? Making a decision in any one of those areas is gonna influence your options in the other areas. So said very, very clearly, 
if you think there is a magic number or if someone told you or a commercial told you there's a magic number once you save up and i'll just say a million dollars for example once you save up a million dollars you're ready to retire well if you save up a million dollars by age 45 can you retire if you save up a million dollars but you spend 250,000 a year can you retire right so i'm painting that that picture in extremes because that is a myth there's no one magic number that fits for all cases you've got to work with your cfp build out your five-factor retirement plan looking at all six areas of your financial life the second myth deals with not having enough saving capacity meaning well if this is an expensive season of life i don't need to save as much for retirement no 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 the truth is the more you spend the more you need to save and the opposite is true as well the less you spend technically the less you need to save and and you can see the paradox here and i've talked about this several times i haven't heard anyone else talk about this risk but we've seen it a lot I had to put a label on it i labeled it the bernard paradox not a great name um, come up with something better, leave it below in the comments, but it's true. The more that you spend, the more you need to have saved up for retirement, but the harder it is, right? You're spending a lot more and therefore you have less capacity to save. On the contrary, the less that you spend, the better, you know, the greater capacity you have to save, but you technically don't need to have that much saved up. So what's the application here? technically that really uncomfortable discipline that we call budget i would actually call it a a three bank account system that's important both during your working career as well as to help you get to retirement and into or excuse me through retirement as well knowing and managing your expenses knowing where your money is going so that at all times whether it's easy or whether it's difficult and requires some some intentional sacrifice, you're able to manage your lifestyle and save up aggressively for that long-term financial goal. And then the third myth is that Social Security or Medicare has already defined when you're supposed to retire. Now, this feels like less of a myth these days, but back when Social Security, your full retirement age was 65 and Medicare start date was 65, so many people would come in and we'd ask them, when do you want to retire? And they would use the words, well, I have to retire at 65. These days, sometimes we hear people say, I have to retire at 62 or I have to retire at 65. And it's because those are key ages that apply to these social retirement systems, Social Security and Medicare. The earliest age at which you can draw Social Security is age 62. And the date that you're officially eligible for Medicare, unless you have a unique circumstance, is age 65. But even though those are available, don't let those dictate when you should retire. Again, you've got to look at your five-factor retirement plan to determine when can I retire successfully. What I left out in that first myth is that once you build out those five factors, then you've got to work with your CFP to see, well, is this a confident retirement? How do they do that? They do some sophisticated calculations along with some stress tests. We do a thousand different stress tests to see if in a good market, a medium market, a bad market, what percentage of those thousand stress tests, those scenarios, do you end up at life expectancy with money where you haven't run out of your nest egg, not trying to spend through your house, just the nest egg that you've built up. And you want to have at least, in our opinion, at least 80% of those stress tests where you make it to that life expectancy without running out of money. That gives you a lot of flexibility just in case your, you know, any of those variables or those assumptions turn out to be different. So have those, have, have that dictate when you should draw social security and optimize it with your, with your CFP and when to draw and when to get on Medicare. So those are three retirement myths that you could hear from other people, even credible sources that could actually get your eye off the ball, move you off target when it comes to saving up and planning for retirement. How do you overcome that? These three myths and all the others, work with your certified financial planner, make sure that they are certified, okay? That means they're holding themselves 
out as a fiduciary, but then also make sure that they're doing comprehensive financial planning. Not just helping you with investments and oh by the way I can talk about these other things too. No, 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 that they've got a formal process for working through all six areas of your financial life, giving you great guidance. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with KYsMoneyShow.com. You can find us there as well, or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.